The story of my life is a lot like the story of your lives. Different parents, different places you were born, different things you did. But they all bring you to a point, at least for myself, a purpose. Like, why am I here? I think every child has that question. Where did I come from? Where will I go? When we're young children, we even ask our mother, what happens when you die? Tell me how I was born. Tell me everything. I was so longing as a child. I almost died when I was six weeks old. And they said I would never be normal. And I didn't think I could ever go back to normal. I didn't speak either. They thought something was wrong with me mentally. At four years old, they realized I couldn't really be understood that well. And when I look back, I know it's because I was talking to those that really were not physically there. I love Jesus and I love Mary. I even had an altar, but I didn't know it was an altar. And I think I used to just talk to them. And I collected Christmas cards with Madonna and Child. And anything I could get my hands on of people that I just esteemed as great, like Abraham Lincoln, Clara Barton, George Washington Carver, they were my heroes. And as I started school, I developed, I learned to read and and I carried on. But I was always looking for something beyond the classroom. Something that made more sense than just learning to learn. And as years unfolded, and I left society for a period of time, and I became a hippie. Now most people laugh at being a hippie. But really, we were searchers of truth. We were looking for what made sense, but also in a magical and very mystical way. Because we knew there was a thought, there was a fine line between here and there. Like when the doors wrote the song Break Through to the Other Side. I knew there was another side. I knew there was another. I was determined to find the cohesiveness of the whole. And so, yes, I traveled through the land of LSD, of psilocybin, of fasting, of being a fruitarian, of meditating on the beaches on Maui, of traveling the world over, seeking for the people that knew, that knew the truth. At that time, I thought it was the indigenous ones because reading and writing wasn't giving them to me. But I knew somebody knew a way of life that I could follow. And I found it in 1970 when I walked into the first ashram. I didn't even know what an ashram was. Somebody took me there, magically took me there. I've never seen him since. He drove me there for three days through California to Tucson, Arizona, because he said somebody had told him to take me, which was that other side. So I took my first Kundalini Yoga class there. I cried and I cried because I said, I have wandered now since I was a child the age of 26, and now I'm a grown-up. 
met Yogi Bhajan thereafter. I was given, through his blessing and guidance, my spiritual name, Gurmukh, which means one who loves thousands of people across the world. That was almost 50 years ago. And to tell you the truth, as you said, I don't even know what would have happened if we hadn't gone through this storm. I'm so thankful. Every day when I rise and I do my sadhana, I do the meditations, I do the kundalini yoga, and going on almost 75, I bow my head every day and I say thank you. Oh, creative force, for this science. It's given me a joy, a health, a clarity, a direction. It's given me a way of life. It's given me a happiness that I didn't even know was possible in my search. And I find every place we go now in the world, from India to China, Central America, across the Americas, through Canada, and through many, many other countries. They can tell the same story. Different circumstances, different ways of arriving at what? At that internal joy that never staggers, never wavers, is always there in spite of circumstances. That's what Kundalini Yoga does. And then, once you get the touch of it, if you want to become a teacher, what does a teacher do? He says, to those who were lost, as you were, or misunderstood, or didn't understand why they were here, he said, come on, you want to try this thing? I tried it and it really helped me. Thousands of people now are doing Kundalini Yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. Doing a lifestyle which includes all the way from showers cold in the morning to getting up before the sun comes up to eating a vegetarian diet to being kind to knowing that the only way one can is that inner joy, and then taking that inner knowingness, walking out of your house in the morning to help serve and uplift others. I thank Yogi Bhajan every single day. He gave us an ancient 40,000 year old technology that's so ripe, so purposeful, and so rightly directed for today. With all of the busyness that goes on in this world with technology and knowing globally everything, how does one quiet? How does one sleep well? How does one talk more slowly? How does one find the joy, the laughter, the friendship, the hugs, the kisses, the love? It happens. Thank you for listening to my story.